Uh, greetings, fellow travelers and friends and, and people from all over the world. Welcome to Life Mastery TV, your source for inspiration, empowerment, and fulfillment. My name is David McLeod, and I am your Life Mastery coach and also the author of the new book, A Life to Die For. I hope you'll pick up a copy at uh, the Amazon Kindle store, or if you like it better, you can get it there as well. You know, Today, we're doing episode number 140. Well, that's pretty impressive. And the title of this episode is Healthy Body, Healthy Soul. And you know, what I've learned is no matter how much work I do on myself to evolve and grow into the amazing being that I believe I am supposed to be, one unavoidable fact seems to be really clear here. And that is, as long as I choose to remain on, that, on this physical plane, Unconditional love and acceptance kind of insists that I take good care of my physical health. Well, my guest has been dubbed the health transformation engineer, nutrition, and lifestyle coach. She designs deliciously effective personal programs to heal the body from the inside. She got here to this condition as a result of her own health crisis with no help from Western medicine despite having a BSc, a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition. So she dove into research to learn how to fix herself for 15 different conditions. Now think about that for a minute, folks. 15 different conditions that were taking her down. She reclaimed control of her health, reversed it all, and then obtained a gastrointestinal mastery certification once she understood that all health and disease starts in the gut. Now she empowers other people to do the same. So please join me in welcoming the amazing Jackie Walburn to today's program. Thank you so much for joining me today, Jackie. I know we had a little bit of technical stuff at the beginning, but here we are. So let's let's just have fun and welcome. Oh, thank you, thank you. I am so excited to be here. This is such an honor. I've 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 listened to so many of your podcasts and I just absolutely love you. And I am just completely out of my mind here to think that I am on your podcast and doing this and helping the world and spreading the word and getting out there and trying to increase the frequencies of everybody on the planet. Yeah, well, that's a laudable goal and something that, you know, I I love to do. You know, I have uh, I've gone through my own challenges in life and uh, you know, there was a time not that long ago actually where my own consciousness level was was pretty low and I had to do some work to, to raise it up. And now that I've gotten it up to a certain level, it feels like I can't even imagine myself being back where I was before. Do you have that same experience? Oh my gosh, yes. And that's the whole reason I'm doing what I'm doing and reorganize my life purposes um, was because I discovered that I couldn't get any higher as long as my health was failing. And it was such a distraction to try to reach higher levels and to figure out what my purposes were as long as I was having these health issues. And right. so I dove into resolving those health issues. And once I resolved them, oh, my God, everything just fell into place. The whole universe opened up to me. It was like, I mean, I could just feel myself expanding outwards and just reaching out to the entire and touching the entire universe but I couldn't do it as long as I was stuck in my physical health, not being where it needed to be, constantly being distracted by my downward spiral in my health and taking me out of this world, out of the physical world. Um, and this has changed everything for me. It's been such an exciting journey and so fulfilling and just huge amounts of stuff going in the direction of just feeling so much more and feeling so much energy and just feeling love for the entire universe. It's fabulous. <laughs> well, I can tell by just by your, your passion and your energy that you're definitely moving in the right direction for yourself. But the question I want to ask, you know, when, when I was introducing you there, your, your bio talks about these 15 conditions. That sounds pretty intense. <sighs> so you're saying that you had a, like a pretty bad health situation going on before. And why don't you just walk us through that journey a little bit and how you got there. Oh, absolutely. And then maybe how so, you yes, um, you froze a little. I'm hoping this is still going. All right, so um, I had 
diabetes, I had obesity, I had chronic fatigue, I had depression, I had eczema, I had edema, allergies, asthma, um, chronic systemic candida infection. Um, I it, the list just goes on and on. I was I was a total mess. I mean, thyroid conditions, um, adrenal conditions. I mean, just everything going in. And it was was my chronic kidney disease and my fatty liver that was actually growing exponentially and taking me down. Uh, my kidneys were failing horribly. And I was actually to a stage three and a half or more. I was starting to actually urinate blood. Um, and so I decided from there that, you know, that's it. I have to do something. This is not right because there's nothing, there shouldn't be anything wrong with me. Wow. That sounds, I'm sorry. That sounds awful. And I really, <laughs> I'm sorry you had to go through all that. But it brought me here. There's, yeah. there's a lesson to be learned in everything sure. that we experience. And the question is just to find out what the lesson is. And if I hadn't gone that direction, I never would have found my life purpose to try to heal the people of the world who are suffering from chronic conditions that aren't getting any help from Western medicine. Right. Right. So it's, it's again, everything, no matter how bad it is, has something to teach you. And yeah. that's where our purpose comes in. It's like, you're not on the path, so I'm going to do something to get you there. And lo and behold, we experience something that actually changes the direction of our lives. Right. So, hey, well, I'm let me here. ask you this. Did you. So at the time, first of all, how long ago was this that, that this was happening for you? Actually, um, it was four years ago that I found myself in that place. And wow. so it took me about a year to reverse it all and to take back my health. And I have now been maintaining. I lost 90 pounds. Um, and I just I have now held on to where I am and been in this state for now for three and a half, about three and a half years. That's so great. It took me about a year. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're able to get yourself out of that and, and learn something from it. And so what I, I guess what I'd like to ask is, did you in the process of your uh, research and discovery uh, find any particular causes that were leading to all of these things or was it a was it a a mixture of things that were causing it? Well, I did myself as an experiment because everything that I was when I dove into we're the research, all experiments, aren't we? Exactly. It's a journey. It's a journey. Yeah. Um, but basically, when I finally decided that there was something else had to be wrong and I had to figure out what it was. I dove into all the research to find out that everything I learned in my dietetics program going through college and getting my degree in nutrition was a lie. Uh -huh. I mean, it was based on faulty science and the whole food pyramid that we learned back. I mean, I learned the food pyramid back in school when I in the 70s and then my dietetics programs in the 80s. And now they find out that the actual food pyramid that is high in grains was false. It was fabricated. It was faulty science. Um, the guy who did it, his name was Keyes. And what he did was he decided to figure out the government asked him to come up with a program for the entire country of how to eat to be healthy. And he did a worldwide study with a whole bunch of countries and when they did not meet the countries that did not meet his expectations he dropped them from the study so that he could have the food pyramid that he believed was right and he had no nutritional yeah. background nothing whatsoever and it's all made up it's all made up we were lied to right. and, and you know i hate to say it but a lot of well, I shouldn't say a lot. There are all scientists are human beings, at least so far. And <laughs> consequently, they are affected by the same biases that you and I are affected by. Our and, belief and, system. Yes, right. absolutely. And, and the problem is, if they're not aware of their biases, I'm not, I, I'm sure that this Keynes guy wasn't, maybe he wasn't, maybe he was, but he probably wasn't deliberately trying to mislead people. But he did have his own belief system. And he did have his own way of thinking. And, and, and there's no doubt in my mind that his biases may have pointed him in a particular direction, or he may have been influenced by some other external sources 
money perhaps, I don't know, that, you know, help to lead that charge. Now, this happens too. However, we can't, I don't think it's fair to paint all scientists with that same brush. I mean, there's lots of really wonderful oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. scientists out there. I'm one. I'm one. <laughs> who are very high integrity and they recognize their own biases and they try to control for those biases in all their experiments. Oh, yeah. And, you know, yeah. if you don't look outside the box, you're stuck in a paradigm of what yeah. has existed in the past and you can't move forward. Yeah. And so it's a big issue. And it's I mean, I have I go through and I read all the research and I go, nope, not this one. Nope, not this one. Nope, that's not true, because I read through their research and I read through their experimentations and I find the flaws in it and I find out what's wrong. And go, nope, this is not right. Nope, this is not right. And, and you know, it's like, okay, well, maybe I need to readdress this because, you know, I have a belief system as well that constantly is evolving. And I have to keep an open mind and keep an open box, you know, outlook. And, you know, I'll consider anything. I'll look at anything and see where it leads. And, you know, it's right. like, you know, there's research, you know, on so many different size, uh, sides as far as the ketogenic or the low-carb type diets. And every time I see an article that says, you know, it's bad for you or whatever, then I look at the research and I go, wait a minute, you're feeding, you're feeding these rats or whatever. You're feeding them trans fats, which we know are toxic. Of course, it's not going to have good outcomes. What are you thinking? <laughs> it's yeah. like, you've got to be kidding. You're feeding them. You're feeding them rat feed. You're not right. feeding them whole foods. You're feeding them processed junk. Um, you know, how can you make a comparison to humans on that? You know, exactly. I don't think we're eating pellets at this point. <laughs> well, and you know, there's another side of this. And you kind of alluded to it in your it, it, a moment ago. One of the things I've noticed about scientific experimentation and study is we ask very, 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 very narrow questions. And we expect someone to get a PhD simply by answering that one question. And so what do they do is they conduct all their studies and their experimentations by excluding everything else that isn't related to that question or they believe is not related to that question. And so what happens is sometimes some very relevant information gets eliminated, you know, and or maybe maybe some study that could actually have, have given them even more information it's eliminated because they don't see how it relates to the original question. Oh, you know, that's the whole point of functional medicine is to look at the body as a whole. Yeah. Every system working together because like there's the gut brain axis where your gut is actually called the second brain because it produces so much more than half of your neurotransmitters. Mm. And your gut microbiome bacteria actually sends signals to your brain and tell it how to behave, tells you what foods to crave, tells you all sorts of things. It sends all of your, you know, you're looking at your serotonin, your dopamine, these are made in your gut that go to your brain. So if your gut's not healthy, your brain's not healthy and you're going to be functioning at a lower frequency level. Okay, right. now hold on, I, I wanna come back to this because that's really, really very interesting. Now I've heard about um, the heart, having its own set of uh, neurons and, and connections and stuff, and that the, the heart actually sends more information to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. But now you're talking about the gut. Now, oh, is it possible yeah. that we're talking about the same thing, or are there, are there two different uh, areas? Actually, here? there are as many, if not more, neurons uh, in your gut than there are in your brain. Oh, um, for every one signal from your brain going to your gut, there are six signals coming back to your brain from your gut. So there is a huge communication process, not only from the bloodstream crossing the blood brain barrier, but also directly through the vagus nerve, which actually connects your brain to your gut. So there is a direct communication line and because your gut is your primary sense of your environment. And so the foods you eat and the things you experience and things going in send signals back to your brain telling you what the environment is so that you can adapt. And your gut actually turns your genes on and off 
your gut microbiome actually is responsible for interacting with your DNA, turning genes off and on to adjust to the environment of what's coming in through your food and water. So there's a huge communication there, even more so than people. It's just this is new emerging science that actually Absolutely. is linking these things. And I wanted to bring in somewhere in this conversation um, Deepak Chopra, which is, of course, you know, I love him. And I, I just I just attended a video webinar of his uh, just last week where he actually listed the five pillars of physical well-being, where he he listed sleep stress management, movement, emotions, and nutrition. And all of these things can be linked directly to vibrational frequencies. Of course, yeah. So it's, and it all comes down to um, his layers of life that he starts off with in his uh, putting in the different, talking about the different layers, and he actually lists the very first one on there as environment. And it is directly related to the lay, the next layer up, which is your physical body. So the food, water we drink, grounding or earthing or nature bathing, those are all the different things that can bring in the frequencies that will get us to the higher levels of energy, mind, intellect, ego, uh, personal soul, collective soul, and up through universal. All those layers of life have to be addressed to be able to move up. And it starts at the bottom with environment going into your body. Sure. Well, that all makes perfect sense to me um, in terms of, you know, my physical being, my physical presence here on this planet. The I'm more interested in your own learning around this and uh, what it is your research led you to understand that helped you to get off of the whatever it was that was causing all those conditions to happen in your life. Tell us more about that, because I think my listeners would want to know about how they might be able to get away from having diabetes or, uh, you know, typhoid problems or not typhoid. Yeah, that, I'm sorry. Thyroid. 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 Yes, thyroid. yes. Thyroid. Different things. The, two, the two major chronic conditions. And I do want to share with your audience, too, that I want them to understand that these so-called diagnoses are nothing but that. All they do is take your symptoms and put a label on you. Exactly. Don't own it. It's yeah. not yeah. yours. It doesn't define who you are. All it is is telling you that your body is saying, hey, there's something wrong. You're doing something wrong that you need to change. That's all it is. And so yeah. it's just a question of finding out what it is you're doing wrong. Now, the person that actually had a very big impact on my aha moment was actually Dr. Jerry Tennant, um, who likens our bodies to alkaline batteries that must be recharged. So we can look at what he does is he does a very, he does for me, his research talking about the energy levels in the body and in our cells and what they need, the amount of energy they need that he measures in microhertz. He, he makes a brief point where he actually compares it to a pH scale. Now, for those who don't understand the pH scale, um, it's a scale of zero to 14, um, seven being neutral, less than seven being acidic and more than seven being basic or alkaline. And again, he likens our bodies to an alkaline battery. So now our bodies like to run at a pH of about 7.2 ish, um, which is basically a little bit alkaline. And that for him is a negative 20 microhertz. Now that means a negative charge. Um, and then cells actually divide to cause regeneration and rebuilding at about a pH of 7.4 or negative 50 microhertz. Now, the interesting thing here is that, and maybe your listeners know this or don't know this, but humans actually share the exact same frequency as the Earth. We are the only living things on the planet to actually have the exact same frequency as the earth. This is why what they call grounding or earthing or nature bathing 
is one way for us to recharge our batteries because when we come in direct contact with the earth, we actually absorb those frequencies and it actually pushes out the positive ions that are acidic in our bodies to change our pH. This is why we like this, how we feel when we go to the beach or we go out into the forest and we actually do what's called nature bathing or earth. Um, but anyway, to what I got was from Jerry Tennant is, and what I've gotten from other things that I've done here um, is the actual physics term is called entrainment. And what that means is when you have two different frequencies near each other, that the stronger frequency will absorb the weaker one. And so what that does to to us is that when we have frequencies in the wrong microhertz, so to speak, whatever you want to call it, um, it actually changes the frequency of our bodies. And now to give you an example, I said negative 50 microhertz is what is perfect for the body to be able to regenerate. Positive 50 is the frequency that cancer functions at so okay I, I i need to get some clarification on this because a frequency is how much something vibrates correct so in my understanding there's no such thing as a negative frequency all frequencies are positive so he must be using the negative term to imply something else like it might be a negative implying an inverted phase or something like that because you can't have a negative frequency. Negative frequency just doesn't exist. All frequencies go from zero up to infinity. So the this is why I'm a little bit confused. It could be that he's he's actually describing something else that I'm that I'm not quite grokking. But I've I've done a lot of I'm, I, I am a scientist myself, so I'm I'm very much aware of this sort of thing and frequencies. So I, I want to get some clarification on what that actually means, uh, it, positive or negative. His his meaning for positive and negative have, have got to be something. Well, it's not, the, yeah. it's not the positive or negative frequency. It's the actual measurement of the microhertz that has a positive or negative charge to it. Oh. Um, so it's okay. actually it's the amount of energy that it carries in what in what vibration. Very good. Frequency. Now I understand. Okay, cool. That makes sense to me now. <laughs> I wasn't sure I was going to be able to explain that because I'm not a physicist. No, that makes anyway. sense. So you're okay, basically, <laughs> yeah, and that's that's perfectly sensible. I mean, it's like taking the frequency of a positive ion versus the frequency of a negative ion. I get it. That makes okay, sense. Cool. Great, yeah. great. But they both have positive frequencies. That's the main thing I was trying to get to. Yes, yeah. yes. So, all right, good. So you learned all that stuff. And how were you able to implement it in your life to help you somehow transform your body into this powerful alkaline battery that I see before me now. Okay, so what happens is when you apply this to the pH scale to food, you recognize that dead or dying food has a low vibrational frequency and live living food has a high frequency. Now, like I said, we share the same frequency as the planet, but plants, actually, many of them have a higher vibrational frequency and a higher pH than we do. But then you have your dead and dying food that actually have a lower frequency. So when you ingest these low frequency foods, it actually pulls your frequency down. When you eat the higher frequency foods, it actually pulls your frequency up. Okay. So you're dead. But I, I still have to come in and interject here again because it's sure. my job to be devil's advocate here. Okay? <laughs> Many people would argue, and I'm sure you may have heard this argument before. We don't eat any live food because the moment you take a plant and cut it and start eating it, it's already in the dying stage. Many people would argue that. You know what? Oh, what was that? I think I know what you're talking about, but I just want to, you know, to I want to vocalize what I believe people are going to argue with. Obviously. 
Okay, so that's I want to say What exactly do you mean by living versus dead? Okay, so like let's let's start with grains. Now, wheat, rye, barley, oats, these these grains are grown and typical grains are grown and they spray them with glyphosate, that's Roundup, to kill them. So the plant dies. Then they harvest the grain and then they refine it down to nothing but its starch so that it loses all its nutritional value. And because it's completely dead and processed, it has no life source energy in it. Now, okay. if you buy, if I just went out this morning and I grow some of my own food in my yard and I went out and I cut green onions to put into my scrambled eggs this morning and it was completely live and full of all of the micronutrients, full of all of the enzymes, full of all of its frequency energies still intact when I cut it up and cooked it up and ate it. So oh, okay. I'm actually ingesting some of the live enzymes and the frequencies that are stored in the plant itself, just like humans and every other living thing, we store our energy in our bodies. So it's not just calories. It's not just fuel. It's not just vitamins, minerals. Live foods have enzymes. They have DNA, RNA that actually talks to our microbiome DNA, RNA that stimulates through to respond to our own genetics. It gives us all the other things. So. Now, I will say, though, of course, the argument's going to be that, of course, the longer the food has been disconnected from its source, its life source, the plant, that its vib vibrational frequency and everything else starts to drop. You know when a food is dead because it starts to rot. Yeah, right. So and until I, that I totally point, resonate with what there's you're something saying. there. So yeah, it, I totally resonate with that. It makes total sense to me. But even even a, a plant that has started to rot probably has more life value and nutrition in it than something that was sprayed with glyphosate. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 but I want to also be fair uh, because not all grains and not all plants are treated the same way. Some, there are, there are people who grow wheat and oats and various other kinds of things in a completely organic environment that does not involve any of that roundup stuff. And That's true. it's generally a lot That's more true. expensive, which is, you know. But okay. as far as the grain goes, they harvest it when it dies. It's better, but it's still vibrationally low. And I won't yeah, yeah. get into the other problems with grains. I mean, I am on a grain-free, gluten-free, dairy-free diet myself. And that's what got my health back. Uh -huh. um, not that everybody has to do that. It all depends on what I call your genetic bucket of whether or not you can handle. The, uh, the, the science is very clear that gluten actually causes intestinal damage in all humans. Matter of fact, all animals that eat it. It's not disputed any longer at this point. So it's a question of whether or not your body can continue to heal from it when it does the damage that it does. Um, it causes an immune response in every human. So and it's it's interesting. I mean, for example, um, leaky gut is so bad in pigs that are fed <clears throat> grains here in the United States that their intestinal uh, tract, their intestines can't be used for casings to make sausage with because they're so full of holes. So they have to ship in casings from Europe where they don't feed them this stuff. That gives you an example of how even our animals who are eating it. I had one guy that actually proposed that every single cow in the United States is a diabetic because of what they feed them and the leaky gut. And they actually were drinking milk from these diabetic cows. <clears throat> I mean, I personally, I think I was weaned off of milk at a very young age. Um, it was the last thing. I love cheese. It's like it was my favorite food. The, it still is my favorite food in the whole wide world, but I can't eat it because of what it does to my body. When I gave up dairy, 
I lost 30 pounds in 60 days because of all the inflammation and damage it was causing me. I had no idea. I had, I have a cast iron stomach. I can eat anything and have no effect, no gas, no bloating, no nothing. I can eat anything. But what it does inside of me is a whole nother, a whole nother thing. When I gave up gluten, just wheat, I lost 20 pounds in 30 days. I was inflamed from it. But again, like I said, it's all about your genetic bucket. Um, I have a really small genetic bucket, so it ran over at a very early age. So for me, it was like I started having symptoms when I was like 10 years old. I was 150 pounds at five feet tall at 10. Um, I had arthritis at 12. I actually lived with arthritis pain in my feet and my knees and my back for like 40 something years. And when I changed my diet, it went away. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. When I detox and gave up gluten, I, I lost like half of my problems, half of my you know different symptoms, so to speak, or conditions, whatever you want to call them, um, just by changing my diet. And this is when it was like, oh, my God, food is medicine. You know, it can be. What's good for one person is another person's poison. And I know for my husband, who does not eat the way that I do completely, um, he can he doesn't have all the issues. He he's able to. He has a bigger genetic bucket. He can handle having some grains every once in a while. He can handle that and it doesn't have an effect on him. I, on the other hand, I mean, if I accidentally get exposed to eating something, I'm not, you know, as far as gluten, grains or dairy, within 30 minutes, I now have intestinal cramping. I've never had that before in my life. And now I have that. It's interesting. Your body body has detoxified itself. Exactly. And also now the symptoms that I never recognized are showing up recognizable. It's amazing. It's it's such an amazing journey. So, I, well, I just, you know, it, it it is very amazing, actually. I think this kind of likens or is very similar to me to the whole process of smoking. Now, you may not see the relationship, but I sure do. I do. It's an addiction. Now, when I first started smoking, I remember how hard I had to work to overcome my body's rejection of the nicotine. <laughs> Because I wanted to be cool. I spent the time and the effort. And after a while, my body said, all right, to hell with you. If you're not going to pay attention to me, I give up. And so what I ended up doing, I did become you know, a smoker for uh, many years. Thank God, I at least quit when I was in my 30s. But the point is, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like that same thing that you have that cramping now, right? When you have that, when you let that p- something come into your body. If you decided to ignore that cramping and continue eating that food, you would go through exactly the same process I went through to become a smoker. There's no difference. We're basically fighting against our natural responses in order to do something that we believe is pleasurable and somehow beneficial to us. Oh, my gosh. And this is this is the problem with I mean, grains actually stimulate the opioid receptors in your brain. Oh. This is why we'll, I mean, it's funny when I talk to clients about getting off of it and they're like, no, no. And it's like, I understand. I understand. It's an addiction and it does stimulate. You get five minutes of pleasure when you eat a piece of cake. I mean, and that's why we crave it. But the sugar and everything else goes into our body, feeds the bad bacteria in our microbiome that sends signals to our brain. Give me more. Give me more. They're the ones that are more addicted than you are. But that five minutes of pleasure is the addiction point. Right. And, then, and then it causes you to want more and more. Oh, my gosh. I, you know, I had a bagel for breakfast. Oh, my God. Ten, ten o'clock comes around. Oh, my God. I need something more. I, you know, the opioid thing is gone. I need more. So I'm going to have, you know, something else. And then two hours later, you're hungry again for something more. Two hours later, you're hungry for something more. I mean, our bodies are not designed to eat every two hours. You're not you're not supposed to be hungry. Those are not hunger pains that you're feeling. They are addiction withdrawal. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. So, so yeah, we've covered a lot of stuff so far. And um, I'm really, really 
I, we could go on for hours here, but we do have a time limit. And I want to get to some important topics here. You know, first of all, you've covered a lot of stuff, and I'm sure that plenty of people who are watching this will want to know what action steps can they take to help start improving their lives through the introduction of good quality foods into their into their diet. What's your recommendation? You know, obviously not everybody's going to just dive into the deep end here. Oh, no, and I wouldn't so, suggest that. Right. So because there must be a way for people to get started and... <laughs> you know, to learn more about their own bodies and, and the right way to, to heal their bodies. What do you propose for that? All right. So breaking up with dead food is definitely a destination and a journey. So let's focus on trying to raise our frequency. So basically you want food freedom and you want to eat like you love yourself. You want your choices to nurture your inner terrain and to free your body of the distractions that are keeping you from higher self by incorporating more organic, natural foods, whole foods from the source, as fresh as possible, um, colorful whole foods to reset your gut microbi microbiome and upregulate your body frequencies. Um, and the key here is the more bitter it is, the better. I mean, I, I am really sensitive to bitter, so I do. I actually do my salads in a smoothie every day. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, we need we need to. What are you saying you do your salads in a smoothie? I do. So I do put, I. I put four cups of spring mix in there. I put beets. I put applesauce. I put um, berries. I mean, I, I'm getting a full complement fat, good fats, MCT oils, things like that. All go into my smoothies. And I put the frozen fruit in there with a scoop of raw cacao powder. So yeah, that I do the same smoothie. <laughs> my, my smoothie is, uh, first of all, I started juicing a long time ago. And so I juice, I juice everything, all my fresh fruit, my vegetables, my, uh, you know, cucumber, I even, believe it or not, kale and spinach leaves. I oh, juice yeah. that stuff. And that goes into my smoothie. And, uh, and the beauty of, of juicing and something that people maybe don't know that much about, you can you extract out the the all the nutritional stuff and the soluble fiber. And then you you basically remove the insoluble fiber, which really isn't adding much. It's all it's doing is making you full. That's all it's doing. But the other stuff is pure nutrition. And the beauty of it is it goes past the, the stomach directly into the intestines and it gets absorbed into the body. That's the amazing thing about juicing. Absolutely. And, you know, it's I mean, I I want the whole food because that's the way nature intended it. Even though juicing is great, some things should be juiced. But the insoluble fiber is what actually gives your body your body motility in your intestines. So I like to a lot of times what I'll do is if I juice, I'll take the leftover pulp and I'll put that in the smoothie. So I'll dig. I may drink the juice at during a juice fast, but I'll like save all the fiber and even freeze it and put it back into smoothies and get it later. Um, but again, I don't waste anything because the way that we have evolved or the way that we were designed, um, however you want to look at it, um, was to eat the whole food in some form. So juicing is great, yeah. especially if you have any kind of intestinal dysbiosis, which means that your gut is compromised and you can't absorb your food. Juicing is a fabulous way. Um, even smoothies are a, a better way to get a lot of your nutrients that you're if you can't digest your food properly until you heal your gut and get out some of the bad stuff. But um, anyway, back to where we were as far as ideas of things that need to go on. Um, the next step, of course, is what is called a purge, a pantry and refrigerator purge, which means that you use up what's in there. And you replace it with better options. Now, like for myself, when I since I do like pasta and I can't have any, uh, I don't like any of the pastas out there, alternative pastas, because they're really high in carbs and I'm still in remission for diabetes and I can't handle large quantities of carbs. Um, I buy something called Miracle Noodles, which are actually from a Japanese yam that has been spiralized into noodles. That has zero calories, but yet still gives me a chance to eat noodles with my 
Italian spices and my Italian seasonings and all my Italian toppings. Um, moving over to, I've changed over all of my baking recipes to work on um, almond flour and coconut flour. Now, some may say you can make your own almond flour um, so that it's still live. Um, if that's what you want, or you can buy it from the store. It probably doesn't have a lot of living frequencies still in it, but um, it it still makes it so that you can have some of your, you can make breads and, and muffins and cupcakes. And, you know, if you still want those things, there are definitely ways around it. There are natural sweeteners that don't have all the toxic impacts of sugar. So whatever your addiction is, you think your addiction is, you can actually eat alternatives that are not going to be toxic to the body. But they're, they're again, they're just a temporary replacement. But there's something to get out of your pantry and to get something else in there until you move forward into a better direction of where you want to be. So, it's again, it's a journey. So bringing in more, you know, Start increasing the amount of organic produce that you buy little by little as you get rid of things like chips and uh, bad foods. You'll find that your food value, actually my food bill has gone down since I started changing the way I eat because I'm no longer buying these other things. And I, now that I've changed over my husband's, some of his eating habits, he's lost 60 pounds in the last year. Wow. Um, and so um, he still does some gluten and some grains and such, but changing him over from like chips. I mean, just taking him off of chips and giving him shelled peanuts that he actually has to open and eat one at a time. He lost 20 pounds just doing that. I mean, it's just finding alternatives. You know, if I want to sit down to a movie and watch, I can't have popcorn. So I can sit there and I can have nuts. And so I'll sit there and eat, you know, whole raw pecans or macadamia nuts as my food munchie for movies and things like that. It, there's alternatives for everything that you're doing. Um, right. It's so easy to actually change over once you know how to do it and you get creative. And I am a total foodie. I mean, I am totally still addicted to food. Of course, we all are to a point. But I still love my beautiful stuff. So, yes, um, basically what your what your people need to do is they need to ask themselves every time they sit down to eat, is this food going to increase my energetic vibrational field? If they ask that question, that is to be mindful of everything they eat, to speak with gratitude and thankfulness for all the food that they're getting, to language into gratitude will restructure the water coming into the food that's in the food that you're eating and change the frequency of the food to be to your benefit. Those are things that are very helpful that everyone can easily do. Well, there's so much here. I mean, really. And I think ultimately it all boils down to one thing, and that is awareness. You know, awareness of our bodies, awareness of what we're putting into our bodies. Um, and a bit of, a, I, I think you talked about it, appreciation and gratitude for what it is we do have. And not only for what we do have, for, but for what we are wanting to invite into our there lives. There you go. There you expressing go. Expressing yeah. gratitude for something that's on its way to us now. I think that's a really important uh, aspect of life mastery as well. Oh, yeah. Well, most people, I mean, they eat unconsciously. They just shove it in and it has yeah. no intention. Give it intention. Uh, I look at food and I say, oh, my God, my body is absolutely going to love this. And I look at and, and it makes and now, you know, my mouth salivates and everything else because I'm giving the food intention of actually nurturing my physical being, which then turns around and nurtures my emotional and spiritual and, and relationship and all the other things. So okay. we all need to change our relationship with food so that um, my quote from my my own quote is to love yourself from the outside in so that your body loves you back from the inside out. Yeah, I know. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. <laughs> well, you know, we've talked about a lot of stuff and we've covered a lot of ground and it's already 45 minutes. We've been, you know, we've been going at this for a while. Is there anything else that you would like to offer before we close out today's program? Um, 
Is there a, is this a good time for me to tell people how I, they can get in touch with me? Oh, absolutely. By all okay. means. Cool. Yeah, I love right. it. Well, I have a website and of course it's in the materials there. Um, Real Health and then the actual scientific abbreviation for solutions is S-O-L-N-S dot com. That is also my Gmail email account. Um, I do have a rather large presence on uh, Facebook. So if people would like to follow me on there, I post all of the vetted articles, research, everything else that I come across goes on there several times a day under all sorts of different categories of health um, so that people can look at that. Um, I also have, um, I'm on LinkedIn. You can find me on Yelp. You can find me on Bing. You can find me on Google. Um, you, I have a YouTube channel um, where I'm- That's a lot. That's a lot. Nobody's okay. going to remember that. Let's at least get your website correct, okay? So, so it's realhealthsolns.com. Yes. Real Health Solutions, S O L N S dot com. Correct. Have I got that right? Yep. Okay, good. And presumably, if they go to that website, they can also find out about your Facebook links and all that stuff. And oh, yeah. it's all there. That. It's all there. Yeah. Well, and if and is there anything in particular that you have to offer right now at your website at realhealthsolutions.com? Okay, well, the big news, I mean, for me anyway, the biggest thing is that I have recently added a membership page hmm. so that people can join as a member um, and get free educational stuff if they want to. Um, they can also upgrade to other things if they want to talk to me there or if they want to set appointments with me to design a program for them. Um, whatever they want to do, it they can start there. They can read my whole journey and read all the other things. They can, you know, check out some of my articles and things I've written and they can check out some of the other things that I've done on there. But the membership page actually has all sort of free vetted information um, as well as upgraded stuff for anything else. If they just want to talk to me, if they just if they want a program, whatever it is else they want, whatever their condition is. I also have a book, um, Heal Thyself Naturally. Um, that they can buy on Amazon as well. So anyway, but um, yeah, yeah, that way, you know, that's the biggest news. I just recently worked very hard on getting that up and running. So another yeah. way that they can uh, can get information, you know, that's out there that's vetted that I've gone through to verify that it's it's on track and it's valid. So they're not confused. I don't want people to be confused about all the different health stuff out there. I can answer right. any questions. Well, look, and I want to just say thank you so much for joining me today. It's oh, been thank you. This was fun. <laughs> a lot of information here. Um, and here's what I would recommend. People go and visit uh, Jackie's website at realhealthsolutions, S-O-L-N-S dot com, and uh, connect with her. And then you can find out more that way. Meanwhile, um, I want to thank you all for watching today's program, and I want to remind you that you can catch recordings of this and all other Life Mastery TV programs through my website at lifemasterytv.com. Now that's life-mastery-tv.com. And as we go through your week, I'd like to remind you to keep practicing your Life Mastery mantra on a daily basis. Practice this, learn it and master it. It goes like this. I gratefully forgive the imperfect being I have been in the past. I gratefully accept the magnificent being I am right now. And I gratefully welcome the evolved being I am becoming in each new moment. So until we meet again, I am David McLeod, your Life Mastery Coach, wishing you love, light, and blessings on your continuing journey. I'll see you next time here on Life Mastery TV. Bye-bye. <laughs>